So this is week five. So in this video, I'm gonna give some updates, some struggles I've had and what I'm doing to overcome it. And one of the biggest struggles I'm having right now would be with my video editor. So this would be the second editor that I went ahead and brought in and comparing to the first editor, quality is very different. So the thing about these two different editors is they're kind of opposite. The first one delivers in like three, four, five, I think six days was the longest it took them, uh, but delivers very quality videos. Whereas the other editor, she takes one day, very speedy, I'm very impressed, but the quality isn't up to par, um, which the thing is, it's okay, uh, it's passable, but it came to the point where some things just weren't um, weren't acceptable. Uh, I did get emotional, not to her, but just inside. And I was like, oh, why is this happening? Um, it's annoying just because of the things I said to change weren't changed and I had to say them again. And again, they weren't addressed. Uh, and I will admit the way I explained it was like from this timestamp to this timestamp, it's incorrect. But apparently it wasn't enough because nothing was changed from there. So I had to go ahead and individually give screenshots of things that weren't changed, uh, which I think, you know, on my fault, I should have just been a lot more specific, be as detailed as possible with it. And the thing is, some of the mistakes were like, okay, footage was far too long. Um, but the biggest mistake was that not only was the B-roll, the footage, not the best, but it was completely wrong. It was from a completely different product that related nothing to what was being talked about. And same thing for the images. And that, you know, was upsetting because, you know, to me, it would have been something obvious that like, hey, it's gonna go ahead and be this link um, that was sent. Everything is there correctly. So I don't know how she would have messed up. And so basically my solution for that was, all right, let me go ahead and find a new video editor. Now, I might be overreacting, uh, but I will say in the past, there have been some communication issues where I go ahead and ask her to fix something, you know, do a quick revision on something and she fixes it, but it's not fully fixed or something is off. Like something wasn't even done, even though I went ahead and mentioned it. So that was like a first red flag. But the reason why I wasn't searching out for another editor is because her quantity is up there. That's mostly because it's not just her working, but she's also working with her brother just to go ahead and produce even quicker. Now, as far as trying to find a new editor, I went ahead and put a job on Upwork. I currently have two different editors that are completing a test project. And out of those two, I'm gonna go ahead and see which is better and then choose them to be part of the team. And after kind of simmering down and kind of thinking for a few days, I went ahead and gave her another task to go ahead and do just to give another chance, but this time be even more specific on what's asked of her and making sure the video editing style is the same style as the first editor. So I went ahead and created SOPs before. I even went ahead and gave like an example video of what the first editor did and also went ahead and detailed out certain parts that should always be consistent throughout, which includes like transitions uh, and the way text is put out. So in the end, I'm still gonna go ahead and work with her, but what I'm gonna do is just give less quantity until she goes ahead and builds up consistent quality of what I'm looking for, and then go ahead and push up quantity again. So that means I'm gonna have a total of three editors working on the team, and this next editor that I'm gonna hire is basically gonna be like a backup editor that's not gonna get, you know, work a lot of times during the week, maybe like once a week, just to go ahead and make sure, you know, I'm always on track to post once a day. So in the end, during these past five days, because of this whole fiasco, there are only two videos posted, which although disappointing, it had to be done. In the end, I have to go ahead and slow down to speed up, which is something I learned back in car sales. So one thing that was also changed during this week would be communication, because oftentimes communication is kind of hard to go ahead and do, you know, we're not always gonna go ahead and be online, especially on Upwork. So I gave them my WhatsApp number, which I was communicating with a few of them, but it's not very organized. So I went ahead and moved all of that into a Slack, into a uh, workspace over here just for the channel. So now we DM here directly and there's also gonna be multiple channels just to give any additional feedback. So if one editor goes ahead and sees something, the other editor also has access and sees that. And then same thing for the script writers. I also try to test out voiceovers with my script writers. And so I'm currently using 11 labs for the voiceovers just because it's a lot easier to do. All I have to do is just type the script, wait for it to generate, and then go ahead and edit the audio on Audacity and then kind of keep doing that until I do all the script. So it's easy, it's relatively cheap, but it's eventually gonna go ahead and be outsourced to somebody. So that's why I want to go ahead and test it out with somebody on my current team, which would be my script writer. And after receiving the first work from her, 
it wasn't up to par, it wasn't the best, mainly because everything was cut way too much in Audacity. So when you talk, when you talk in sentences, there's obviously gonna go ahead and be pauses in between them, uh, especially during each section, there's gonna be an even longer pause, and that just wasn't done. She cut everything way too much, and it just wasn't really the quality I was looking for, so I went ahead and asked her to fix it. Uh, and because I have other voiceovers to go ahead and do that I was gonna go ahead and assign to her, I just decided to go ahead and do them just to currently speed up the process. So uh, I think for now, I am going to keep doing the voiceovers on 11 labs because I mean, I can, uh, and also just to not distract her from the scripts. I also wanted to test this out with my video editor, but because he's currently working on a video right now, that kind of can't be done. But again, I came to the same conclusion that I shouldn't task him with that because that's just gonna go ahead and increase the time that he's gonna go ahead and take to go ahead and deliver the video. And since it already takes a pretty long time, I don't want him to take even longer. Now, as far as the back end goes, I'm getting roughly 3,300 views every 48 hours, which I'm really impressed with. There's only 17 videos up and these views have been consistent. They've been slowly increasing and literally every single video are getting some sort of views. The lowest viewed video is getting five, which is a new video that was posted today. And the highest viewing video uh, is 692, which this was posted 10, 11 days ago. And the thing about these views is the fact that it's on par with my other channel. This would be my other channel is getting 3,500 views every 48 hours. And this is gonna be the face channel where I go ahead and just review a bunch of different products that I put on my Amazon storefront, but I just go ahead and re-upload it to um, this YouTube channel. And the thing about this one is that there's a lot more videos. There's like 600 or 700 videos up. So yeah, it's, it's already catching up and I only have a fraction of the faceless videos on the new channel when compared to this old one. Now, as far as watch hours goes, I have 966.7, which is almost a quarter way up to 4,000 to getting monetized. So I'm still a ways to go and it's only been five weeks. But when it comes to subscribers, this is extremely low. I only gained 76 subscribers and I currently have about 80. So it's really, really far away from getting monetized to getting the thousand. So one of the strategies that I have um, that I think I mentioned before would have been with shorts. Uh, just because with shorts, it has a lot higher potential to go ahead and gain views and gain subscribers. But the only thing is they're probably not gonna go ahead and convert to people that view it. But because this channel is meant to be search-based, there's not really gonna be an audience for it. It's simply gonna go ahead and be whoever watches it, who's ever searching for that product. So because this channel is connected with Amazon Associates, I do have some sales for the past 28 days from October 19th up to yesterday, November 17th. And so throughout all those days, I got my first sale on the 6th of this month. I've had 247 clicks, three items were ordered, and I earned 92 cents. The next day would have been my biggest day, I had 237 clicks. It says zero ordered items, uh, but it still shows a commission of $10.46. The next day was 28 cents. The next day was $4.43, then $3.92, then $3.22, then $3, then $1.41, then $1.88, then $1.12, then $9.08. So in total, that earned me $39.86 from the Amazon Associates program. And I'm also part of the Amazon Influencer program, so I might as well share the results for these as well too. So for the past 30 days from same time frame, October 19th to November 17th, there's been $1,646.17 made, but the majority of the money would have been made, of course, during November. And the lowest I've made in November thus far would have been on November 10th at $17.11. And the most I would have made would have been on November 14th at $130.46. So after November 10th, things got a lot better. Before I was averaging roughly $50 a day and everything nearly doubled. So I'm getting probably around $90 to $100 a day since then. So yeah, that's an update of what's been happening this past week. And if you want to go ahead and continue watching this journey, make sure you hit that subscribe button.